Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of 10 Minute Tips with me, Micah Hoffman from the OSINT Curious Project. Hoping you're having a great day. I want to show you something cool that just came up in one of my SANS classes. This was at the SANS OSINT Summit recently and a student asked about something on fresh onions and we started looking deeper and i think we found something really cool now there is a blog post that is on our osincurio.us website here uh it doesn't show up yet because it hasn't been published yet but it will be here on this technique let's take a look at this now i'm in a tour browser we can see that over here. I've got the little Vidalia onion. If I click here, I can see the circuit that I'm using and everything. I'm going to the Fresh Onions website or Tor Onion Service. Now, the idea with the Tor Onion Service is that it scans all of Tor as much as it knows about every single night, and then it shows you information about it, including any vulnerabilities or interesting directories. That's what we're going to really tap into on this one is two issues that normally on servers on the surface web are turned off or disabled when somebody goes to secure and harden the system. And those services are called the server and the mod status and mod info plugins for the Apache web server. Now, those two plugins are important because they give the system administrator and developer information about what and how the server is configured and what's running on it. For our purposes here in the dark web, we don't want people to know how our servers are configured. So I'm just going to open up a bunch of these. Let's see what happens. Now this is up, oh, not going to the teen porn one. Nope going to the onion dir. Let's see. We're just going to open up a bunch of these and see how the fresh onion server page looks. Okay, so here we have this hidden service, the DZ uh, DK01. It's rock solid light running on port 80. Now this is in Tor. This is not on the surface web. And here we see this server status. The server status is a page that when we click on it, if the node is online, will show us this type of output. Now, this is meant for debugging. It's meant for the system administrator to understand, hey, this is what's happening on my system, and it should be protected. It should be access restricted. But in these cases, it's not. So if you're doing research into a hidden service or an onion service, check out what you can find if it's got server status enabled. Here we have the name of the Onion service that we looked into. Also, we have the version and modules that are installed into that system. We see this is running on Debian Linux operating system. Current time, when it was restarted last, yada, yada, yada. But let's take a look at this. You see down here, we have vhost, novabbs.com retro bbs2.i2p.i2p you know what these are these in the v host column are other servers that are running on this computer we are looking at the dkz dk0 blah 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 onion system but also running in this apache web server is novabbs.com retro bbs2.i2p bch blah 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 dot onion r light dot nova bb these things here in the vhost column allow us to understand that this one server that's in tor is also running a whole bunch of things on the surface web so if we you know we can't do anything in tor with a the anonymity and all we can just flip to the surface web find out where what the nova bbs.com system uh, resolves to and then pursue the investigation that way moreover now we have a couple of links to an i2p dark website and another hidden service that we can look into as well pretty cool huh all right, let's take a look at another one that we pulled up. And I'm just pulling these up at random. Here's another one. No idea if that's going to be online. Here's another one. No idea if that's going to be online. And that one. All right, let's see. 
So here's the YJHN one. Here we have a CentOS operating system in Apache 246 configured in this fashion. Now here we have site61, site63.com.com. So we may be able to look online on the surface web to do some, some research, although this might just be a fake domain. We also get to see the resources that are being requested from people like me, like here, server status, index underscore files, DC, FL dark PNG. So there's an image there. Here's there's a forum running on the system. So we can see what people are sending. Not so interesting. Let's see what else these are timing out. Now, let's take a look at some of these other ones like this one. Uh, this is EPLC blah, 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 dot onion running on Debian system. Okay. And here also we have a virtual host, untergang.de, ncxn, stefan, dot blah, 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 dot de. Here's servercompens.net. So we have a whole bunch of virtual system, virtual host names running on this server, as well as the dark web service. Again, if you wanted to research this server, really, really simple to do so. Let's pick a different one. Here we've got another one. You see multiple dark web names here on onion services. And you can see it's running PHP my admin. Somebody's doing some work in a certain table and somebody's doing payments. Terrific. Check out. So it's a marketplace too. Nice. All right. So this is all, all well and good, but let's see if we can take this a little further. And we can, because we can couple this mod status with a mod info type of vulnerability, where we not only get to see information about what's happening on the server, but we get to see how the server is configured. Let's take a look at this. Here is a W56M67.onion server, and we don't really see much on it. But this server is configured with this mod info Apache server information page. Now, again, this page is meant to be put up by the system administrator to show the developer. These are all of the modules that are installed and you see them here, all the modules that are installed and how they're configured. It should never be public and it should always be taken down. Here we have the name of the onion service. We see that this is on a Windows 32 system. Uh, they're using an older version of Apache mod SSL. We also have the paths to where the files are located on the system. So we have an R drive, but it gets even better because we can actually look at the configuration file of the system. It's not meant for people to, to uh, have this this file out there, we are actually seeing the current configuration file, how it's configured. Now, what we can do is take a look at some of these things. Let's see, let's go all the way to the bottom because there's some fun stuff down there. We, let's see, we can see what they're rewriting. All right, so this bottom part is, let's see, this is core.c. So this is where some of the main configuration things are happening. Now, if we scroll down, we see this is how it appears in this file. Server signature on. Check this out. Server admin. We have an email address at an actual domain on the surface web. Nice. Here's a different name, Hotmail. Um, so we get the configuration files, which should not be public. Here we have a different directory. Most of it's been in R colon, which tells us, you know, there's a, a, probably a network share or multiple file systems. Now we're getting Q. Cool, right? Yeah. So here's a different server. This server is configured for the, let's see, LCUDIT onion uh, service. And if we scroll down, we can look at how it's configured. Now this one's neat because it is configured to run several other onion services. Look at this. 
In the current configuration, it's it's running on a Windows box, C colon XAMP, Apache configuration. We've got all of these other dark web Tor Onion services that it's configured to run. Cool, right? And we're looking at this because of an information disclosure vulnerability, because somebody didn't set up the server correctly. If you want more information on this, check out the OSINT Curious blog. There's a blog entry on in the, about this. And that's all the time I have. I'm Michael Hoffman. Stay OSINT Curious.